Ava Latsuras, um, she's up next. She's Associate Professor of Outdoor Studies at Alaska Pacific University. Um, she's updated um, her co-authored paper from 2016 regarding mentorship with avalanche professional communities. Um, this paper comes after 11 interviews exploring the value in mentorship as it pertains to snow professionals in the US. Ava's also a senior instructor with Avalanche Al Alaska Avalanche School and, and an avalanche dog handler with Alaska Search and Rescue Dogs. So let's welcome Ava. So the thing what made me interested in looking at mentorship was that when I moved to Alaska, I, I was ski patrolling Vail and I wanted to do something with the search and rescue community and I decided that I wanted to become an avalanche dog handler. Uh, easy, right? You go get a puppy, you take a few training courses and then you fill in the dots to become operational, right? Uh, well, it's kind of a scary thought because now you want to be a super skilled, highly trained, competent and proficient professional, but it's not easy to find the cookie crumbs that take you there. Uh, so what did I do? I seeked out for guidance from my mentor, uh, Paul Brousseau, who's uh, K9 Sky, became my like guiding light through this several year process of becoming uh, SAR dog handler. So that made me think about the, this uh, very specific relationship that I had with this person. You know, it, it became not just like he was telling me how to train my dog, but we collaborated on research. He was the person who I called up when I had some new situation or challenging um, communication or anything like that. And uh, he became a friend. So somehow this is very different um, than just being a trainer. So mentorship is something that's uh, very commonly put out in this industry. I heard that very recently in this specific workshop you had a panel discussion about mentorship. Uh, AMGA is talking about mentorship. And uh, it's very hard, hard to, it's confusing subject, so people are like, how do you define it? So my definition of it, or the one that we've used throughout our research, is a long-term mutually beneficial relationship between a more experienced and a less experienced person. Well, um, you know, there's a lot of confusion what it is and what it isn't. So let's go first with teaching and training. So this is a picture from gun school in Alaska. So, um, you know, you go to this place, you get a very specific knowledge upload. It has to do with guns and, you know, where to shoot, when to shoot, when not to shoot. Um, but um, this is passing of knowledge, it's short term, and usually it's not specifically about the individual, right? It's somebody's taking a class. And uh, truth to be told, there are a lot of really good avalanche professional training in the U.S. You know, anything from one-day courses to uh, two-year programs into PhD program, you can go to S Simon Fraser to get a PhD in that. So that should make you a really good, it's a very good training. But, like I said, there are, it's kind of confused with mentoring. Another thing that it gets confused with is coaching. So now coaching takes in very much in focus the individual that is in, in the focus. Um, but it's mostly looking at certain performance and a skill and looking how the person gets into proficiency in that, which is great and it's usually very long term, um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that um, it is, um, you know, it's just about getting feedback, not necessarily uh, long term and very mutually um, developed um, proficiency. So another thing where I want to just say coaching is really important. I'm not saying that none of these things are important. Coaching is the place where you get feedback. And I say in avalanche profession, you need to be open on getting sometimes pretty brutal and honest feedback. So I think coaching is the place, um, uh, that's, and it's really important. So then there's one more thing that gets confused, and that's role modeling. And this very silly picture of one of the people that I call my role model, his name is Don Sheriff. He's like very well-known avalanche professional working in Alaska, Wyoming, you name it. 
And um, so what's role model different than mentor? Role model is some, somebody that you look up to. It's kind of one-way street. I, uh, you know, Don can try to be a role model for a lot of people, and probably a lot of people see him as a role model. But it doesn't mean that there is a mentorship in there. Because I bet Don Sheriff doesn't even know that I consider him as a role model because I never told him that. But it is a very subtle way in this profession to show off the best ways of doing things. And I, I look at people, every more seasoned professional is a role model for novice uh, professionals because people are looking up to how you're behaving yourself. And that's important too. But back to mentoring. So um, I want to see how mentoring is uh, looked in, in the um, avalanche profession. And in 2016, uh, we surveyed avalanche, American Avalanche Association, all professional members, and figured out that there is actually a lot of mentorship going on. But what it came down to, that there are these 16 people that a lot of people told us that, oh, they are my mentors. So we're like, awesome, well, what's going on with this? Let's uh, figure out um, about mentorship in avalanche profession by talking to these people. So we ended up talking with uh, this, this long list of folks, 11 people, and I'm like starstruck still. It was like amazing time, and uh, the recordings are uh, just very powerful, and we are working right now getting at them into some sort of podcast fashion so that you could hear these people tell their stories on their own. You know, anything from like people were mentioned, that, I mean, we all know. The, unfortunately, there's like not anybody from Pacific Northwest in here, but we can change that for like two years down the road. I'll come back here and interview your folks. Uh, something to note, um, so there are two women who got interviewed in this uh, set of interviews, and there is a third female mentioned as being the mentor. And I think that's a good representation of the industry right now. But I just want to tell you that uh, it is told that a lot of women want more mentoring. So if you're a woman in this crowd and you're a professional, have at it, find people that you can be role models for. And then um, in these interviews, obviously, there were lots of names found out since we talked to people who've been in this profession since 1970. So we got this really valuable information from the history of the profession. And there were some of these names that came out that we had, we had not ability to um, interview because they weren't interested in being interviewed or they've already passed on to better ski slopes. So the, but I, I just want to give justice to some of these folks. For example, John Montain, who is a mentor of uh, Carl Berkman from National Avalanche Center. Uh, I mean, he started the MSU Snow Science Program and the International Snow Science Workshops. So a pretty powerful person. Uh, or Ella Chappelle, and this is the only quote, I tried to find somebody from Pacific Northwest, so Rich Marriott um, in, in Edge of Chappelle's obituary said that we called him Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah, that's, a, that's like a true mentor right there. And he's like the grandmaster who's putting all those scientifics and practitioners in, in, in good place. And then there is this person, Art J Judson, that I'll get into here in a little bit. And he started as a forest service snow ranger in the 60s. And this is really important. Somebody is looking for a historian project, right, right up about these snow rangers. They made amazing things when this profession was just started out. But unfortunately, uh, in this project, we couldn't really give them justice. But Art Judson was the mentor of Knox Williams, who is uh, one of our interviews. And, um, uh, Knox really painted a really good picture of what was going on in the 70s because he said that he was, he was a meteorologist, right, like weather geek, and he goes into this profession, but he said that he didn't know avalanche from a snowball. So our judge pretty much like held his hand and said, well, you might have a meteorology degree, but this is how avalanches work. And Knox Williams became this huge, very important person in the snow community in Colorado. So uh, he had some base knowledge, but um, he needed this person to show him the ropes. And so then, we, if we go into what's happening right now, uh, Wendy Wagner is the director of the Chugach Avalanche Center, and she also has a degree in modern meteorology, just like Knox did. But even her, now 50 years later, says that she could not become avalanche forecaster, even with this amazing degree, without spending hundreds of days touring with her mentors. So there's just something to be said about one-on-one -on -one interaction 
in the real world. So there is, there is YouTube, there is online stuff, and there are a lot of degrees, but um, there is something still valuable for um, being mentored by other people. I also want to read you a quote uh, by Don Sheriff again. He made the comparison to the trades. Becoming a professional electrician or plumber, you're looking at a 4,000 hour apprenticeship. Throughout that, you have formal classes, examination, a lot of on-the-job training. After 4,000 hours of this, you become a journeyman, and with another 4,000 hours of apprenticeship, you get to the master progress. For better or worse, we are looking at a profession with 13 days of formal training. That's a different model, and our profession may be more risky than plumbing. Just saying, mentorship is crucial, where formal training is quite short and finite. Uh, another interview of ours was um, Ethan Green. You might know him. He's the director of the Colorado Avalanche Information Center. And that's one of the largest centers in, in the US. And he's right now um, uh, leading the team of 17 forecasters. Uh, but he started as an intern for Carr Brooklyn. It was like, I was just laughing when I heard this. I mean, Carr was giving a talk at MSU. And there is this kid who's 18 and says, I want to do that. And now, there he is. But Ethan also went through all kinds of places. He worked in many different locations and was mentored by a lot of really powerful people who told him how to uh, become a really good professional. So, so right now, um, Ethan, uh, Ethan says that he's mentored a lot of people by being a supervisor. So that's a lot of things, you know. We, you are in your work and you feel like you're supervising people. Um, and that's where a lot of things start. And then mentorship becomes when it's so powerful a relationship that it actually spills out of your working relationship. So that even the person might, might jump the ship to another forecast center or becomes a DOT forecaster, there is still a lot of talk and this relationship continues. Um, another person of uh, high caliber, at least for all Alaskans, is Dave Hamry, who was one of our interviewees. And he kind of approached it from a different place. Like he started as a ski patrol in Alta, and he said that it's a wild days in, in the 70s. Uh, and, and then he moved on to different places, he's done all kinds of forecasting. And he feels like now that he's at the almost like at the end of his amazing career, um, he feels like he needs to give back. So it's not just a job. It wasn't just like, I'm a supervisor, so I had to tell, uh, get these young people to, up to speed. But he feels like it's an ethical choice. If you've been mentored by somebody, now it's your time to give back. Another place how mentorship often starts is from the teacher-student role. And here is Lynn Wolf, who is a Prescott graduate, with Le Dave Lovejoy, who is a professor at Prescott. And, and, um, and Lynn talked at length about how several of her mentorship pro um, relationships have started as the, somebody being her student. But I'm like university instructor. I'm not going to get to that level with many of my students. It's a student. And so what's in it? So this is a trick for all of you who are looking for mentors. This is what a lot of these folks said. It's somebody who is intellectually curious. Somebody who asks good questions. Somebody who feels passionate about industry or avalanches and that they see themselves as somewhere going long term. Because it's a lot of commitment. It's time, it's your like, like, you know, putzing your brain to tell this new person uh, how to learn more about avalanches. So it takes a lot of time. So, you know, only few people kind of qualify into that volunteer thing. And then what these mentors give back is opportunities. They give you knowledge. And oftentimes, they also network for you. Well, we all know what do, what do the mentors get back from their mentees is also really important. Um, oftentimes, there's this role tr transition. If they have a relationship person that's working, they get um, kind of peer-like first. And then sometimes, it's almost like a role reversal. So um, these young people, younger people, um, can actually bring the mentors up to speed on new technologies um, and just staying relevant and engaged in uh, what, what's the current trends in the world. And um, so that's a really important 
piece of it. So moving along here a little bit. Um, so S Scott Savage, um, who is the only person who, I asked my interviewees to send me pictures and he sent me a paddling picture so that, that's what you're gonna get. Um, but he works at the Sawtooth Avalanche Center in the team of three forecasters. So it's like a totally different place than Ethan Green at CAIC. Or even here, you have a, quite a big team. So for people like Scott, it's like super important that he has other people on a speed dial that he can call up. Like, huh, rain and snow event in February, who would have thunk, you know? And so he's gonna call somebody that he made a relationship on prior. And it's really important, especially with small teams. Um, so very different from big, big places. And then next online is Carr Birkeland. He's the uh, director of the National Avalanche Center. And he's been in the business since 1980. And believe it or not, he still has people on speed dial. And that keeps him engaged. So he has a lot of uh, people that he still works with because he says that he doesn't always know the right answers or if he's going to the right direction. So he wants to keep those connections up. And, um, and he has uh, mentors and mentees all over the world, actually. And uh, what that creates is, is a well-functioning professional network. So like if you take one thing out of my talk, that's it. Professional network. Because none of us can do this job by ourselves. Don't even think that you could. And we had like really interesting clusters uh, in our research from there. Like I said, we need to do one on Pacific Northwest because there isn't any in here. But um, it's just like really important thing that there is a place where you can tap into other people. Why? Why do you need other people? Well, we're dealing with uncertainty all the time in this business. And oftentimes, um, you don't, you don't really know it's complex, it's dynamic, and no matter which sector you're working, you're gonna be stumped. And as a matter of fact, Wendy Wagner talks about this, how one of the biggest things she learned from her mentors was that it's all right to be humble and not to know the answer. And I think you can see a good mentor if they sometimes say, oh, actually, I don't know. Let me know when you figure it out. And then that's a lead for you to have a good conversation about it. Um, so, and, and another thing, like Ethan Green, for example, um, explained that um, he took a lot of things about route finding, dealing with um, avalanche problems through his mentors over, over a series of years. So it takes a long time for you to like figure it out. How do you deal with deep slabs, for example? You can't just get over a year. So that's another place where um, you just need to have long-term um, relationships. Um, I want to read you a quote from Henry Muncher. He's the general manager of a true gadget powder guides. And he says this, it's powerful. There aren't enough days in the winter or winters in your career to see it all yourself and figure it out. The volume of decisions we have to make relative to the amount of feedback that we get is just incredibly out of whack. I think that being able to get insight from other people that have been doing it for a long time and learn their own lessons is really critical. Um, another a place where Don Sheriff um, was sharing, uh, Ian McCammon was one of his mentors and we often, you know, we quote Ian McCammon all the time until somebody else comes up with another little human traps um, ways, but um, uh, you know, uncertainties are just part of this profession so your mentors will help you to learn um, how to deal with it more without um, getting killed. Because that's what this is all about, is risk management and workplace safety. So you can't push the uncertainty too far or it's gonna be a bad place. Uh, youngest person that we inter interviewed in this was a ski guide because we wanted to look at different sectors. and. Um, even Chris Marshall had really good thoughts about what is this relationship like so that the mentorship works. And, and one of the things that comes out of that is honest, open communication. So you have to be ready to disagree. And more importantly, you have to be ready to talk about really awkward, difficult conversations. 
So mentorship is a place of um, safe place for being vulnerable because we all make mistakes and we better own it or we're going to kill somebody else, right? So that's where um, having that one person who you feel that you can call up if you messed up is really important for the long longevity of people. In one minute? Okay, perfect. Okay, excellent. So, um, <laughs> Drew Hardesty, who is kind of a philosopher of a um, uh, forecaster from Utah Avalanche Center, um, uh, added a totally different knack on the perspective of mentorship. And uh, Tim Kim uh, Tom Kimbrough was one of his mentors, and he, he uh, told this story on our interview. It was my first and only season up in Logan area mountains and we were dealing with the deep slab instability. And I thought it was over, but it was not. And I issued a low avalanche danger that morning and we had an avalanche fatality. It was a snowmobiler up just along the Idaho border there, sort of wearing in. On the fax machine comes this fax from Tom Kimbrough. And I still have it, I'm looking at it right now date was March 5th, 2000, and it says, Drew, here's a couple of pages from the Dalai Lama's book that I thought pertained to the forecasting dilemma, Ethics for a New Millennium. And that really grabbed me, as it wasn't so much where, in this case, Kimbra was mentoring me on the snow, like, oh, depth horse, you're activated, or you have to be more conservative, and on and on and on, but it was more of a life perspective an approach on how to look at our jobs as avalanche people and how the snow, no, snow interacts with people and lives and so forth. Okay, my last slide. Am I like done? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to leave with this. Um, so if you are an avalanche professional, um, you should take hand like who have you mentored and who has mentored you and just keep at it because we all need one-on-one -on -one instruction in this profession. And a uh, big thank you, and beers are coming your way. <laughs>